Hello, thank you for joining this session. My name is Rohi Gaukar and I'm an AWS Senior Developer Advocate here based out of India. And today I'm going to talk about Infrastructure as Code or Infrastructure S Code with AWS Cloud Development Kit. Before we get into the topic, I do want to talk a little bit about myself. I call myself I'm born in the cloud. The reason is because I completed my graduation and I joined an IT services company here in India, which was to ha which had a small R&D team and we were doing a lot of POCs around different cloud vendors. We were doing comparisons of how different cloud vendors were because cloud was still a buzzword around somewhere around 2009, 2010. So we were doing a lot of POCs and we had our own COE and ultimately this R&D over the years was converted into a practice where we were actually migrating internal applications to the AWS platform. So I had a lot of hands-on experience working with AWS and I actually fell in love with the technology. And it was a dream come true that when I could join AWS as a cloud support engineer, I had to actually uproot my entire life and take a calculated risk and move to Cape Town, South Africa because I come from a very typical middle-class Indian family which is quite protective and quite conservative about uh, leaving their uh, kids alone right and never lived alone until then so it was a different experience for me it was amazing growth professionally and personally because I was learning a lot about working for AWS and living how to live alone right and from Cape Town I moved to Singapore I moved as a solution architect I have been a solution architect for almost five years here at AWS. I've worked with customers who have no workload on the AWS cloud. They, they have no idea what cloud is to customers who actually have millions of dollars of investment on the AWS platform. So I had a lot of experience, a lot of learnings from these different set of customers. And that's why this year, somewhere around this year, I decided to move to a developer advocate tool where I want to work with a lot of community and try to make it simple for them to get onto the AWS platform because it's an amazing technology to work with. So now let's start talking about AWS CDK. Now AWS CDK or Cloud Development Kit is an open source development framework which using which you can model and provision your infrastructure on the AWS platform using a programming language. So let's start and I will explain all this. So let's start talking about this in the session. CDK was announced in 2018, so it's not really quite new, but it was uh, it went GA with few languages sometime around last year. We also released its roadmap because we are doing a lot of awesome things with a lot of developers. And because it's open source, there are a lot of people who are actually contributing back to CDK. So you can actually view this uh, roadmap on the GitHub platform. We also announced CDK8, which is CDK for Kubernetes. And there are a few slides in the end where I'll try to explain it quickly of what CDK for Kubernetes is. What's coming next? Do check out the roadmap. If you like something, go ahead, do a plus one. If you want to contribute, feel free to do that. And we're looking forward to see what all you can build with CDK. So before you understand CDK, you understand why you need CDK, right? When a customer starts working on the AWS platform, they will always start with the AWS Management Console because it's easier to work with the GUI. You just, with few simple clicks, you can actually create IT resources like compute, like storage, databases, networking on the AWS platform, right? You can do that. But when your application starts getting more complex, there is a lot many things that you have to create and manage. A lot of customers move into creating like our typical operations people we move into writing our own scripts like i've written a lot of scripts for working with aws but then it was so tedious right i had to actually do a lot of boilerplating like how am i going to handle these errors how am i going to do retries what happens when something fails there are a lot of these questions that you actually have to write a lot in the scripts and this gave birth to something called as aws cloud formation or even services like Terraform, where AWS CloudFormation, you write your infrastructure in a JSON or a YAML based template and you give it to CloudFormation. CloudFormation will read this JSON, will understand what is your requirement and based on your requirement, it will actually invoke the SDKs in the backend of AWS. It will call the APIs in the backend and create these resources for you in the AWS Cloud. It will take care of the CRUD operations. It will take care of the retries and what to do when something fails. It will take care of all of these boilerplating for you. You just have to define your application or your infrastructure in a JSON or a YAML template. 
Now I have been a support engineer where I was a subject matter expert for CloudFormation and this was almost 5-6 years ago when YAML was also not supported in CloudFormation. I know how tedious it was for a lot of customers to just do copy pasting between different templates and while it was easy to do infrastructure like that, it was still difficult to work with YAML, it's still difficult to work with JSON because we all have been developers somewhere in our lives, right? And for us, working with the programming language is much easier than just working with the YAML or a JSON document. And that's led to a lot of document object models kind of uh, features, applications like Troposphere, where you could actually write your infrastructure in the programming language you like this programming language would create the JSON or YAML file, which you can then give to services like CloudFormation or Terraform, and they would create the uh, infrastructure for you. So now you're interacting with code in your favorite language, right? This was great. Still, there was no abstra abstraction. So for example, in Troposphere, if you have to define a VPC and some few subnets and some NAT gateway or internet gateway, you have to actually write 200 plus lines of code just for creating something like a VPC, which is a basic thing that you would need when you're creating infrastructure on AWS platform. And that's where CDK comes into place. It gives you this abstraction. And you'll see in the example I'm talking about, like 200 plus lines of code versus one line of code in CDK. You will see the difference of how beautiful CDK is and what is the problem that it's trying to solve. So if you're working with CDK, there are three important things you have to remember. There's a core framework, there's a construct library, and there's a CDK CLI. The CDK CLI is easy to understand, right? You install a CLI and you do a lot of uh, interaction with the CDK CLI. The core framework is where it, the magic happens. So when you start uh, with CDK, you actually work with your favorite ID. Like it could be any of the IDs that you've been working with. Here, you actually use the CDK CLI to initialize the CDK application in the programming languages that are supported by CDK. Okay, once you do CDK in it, you can then define different stacks. Now, these are actually cloud formation stacks, so they actually correspond to a cloud formation stack. So, you can define one or more different stacks inside the application. Now, in the stacks, you define one or more constructs. Now, a construct could be just an S3 bucket or a construct could be S3 bucket plus cloud, for me, uh, cloud front. So you could have a different set of constructs that you can define within this stack. We'll talk about construct in the next slide, so don't worry. You define all this in the application. Once you're done, you say CDK synth or CDK synthesize. This will create this cloud formation template for you. Okay. You could also say CDK deploy, which will not just create this CloudFormation template, but will also deploy it to CloudFormation, which will then go ahead and create these resources in the AWS platform. So quickly, you define this application, you use the CDK CLI to synthesize the application to create a CloudFormation template, and you use the CDK CLI to deploy it to CloudFormation. So all of this is actually happening from your IDE. You're not leaving your IDE, you're not going to management console, you're not writing any other scripts. You're working from your IDE and you're creating your infrastructure from this IDE. Isn't that beautiful? The construct library is a place where you can find all information about the constructs that have already been created for you, right? You can find information about what are these different constructs, uh, what are the level of constructs. We'll talk quickly about level of constructs as well. You will find out a lot of information about the languages they support, are they experimental, are they stable, can you use it in production or not, depends on the level, like stable or experimental, uh, how do you import it, what are the properties, what are the methods that are supported by the construct. So, the construct library will actually give you all this information and it's your go-to place when you're working with CDK. There are three types of constructs uh, in CDK. First is the low-level constructs, which directly respond to the cloud formation resources. So for example, if you have to define a VPC, I'm just taking a simple example VPC because everyone understands VPC or should understand VPC if they're starting with AWS. Uh, VPC, anything that starts with CFN will be a low-level construct. For creating a VPC, you have to define a CIDR block. It's a required property in cloud formation. So when you're working with a construct that is a low level construct, you also have to define that required property. Without it, you cannot actually define the cloud formation template. And here you will have to define each and every resource. Like if I need VPC, I define it. I need subnets, I have to define it. I have to define every component that I need inside that VPC. 
on the other side the high level construct you can define something like hey i want to create a vpc and that will not just create the vpc it will create pu some public subnets or private subnets uh, nat gateways and so on and so forth de depending on the construct value and this is beautiful about high level constructs because they offer you these convenient defaults even if you don't mention these uh, properties they have certain defaults and it will also not just use these defaults but may also create certain resources that is that are needed by this particular construct so if you understand architectures like i do the just one line of code compared to the 200 plus lines of code in troposphere this one line of code will not will create a vpc will create public subnets will create private subnets will create nat gateways will create elastic ips for the nat gateways will create route table attach them or associate them with the subnets internet gateway and associate that with the uh, uh, vpc as well so there are so many things that are happening with just one line of code now do you understand why i'm saying it's amazing to use a cdk and the third type is definitely solution constructs which are like patterns which have been created already for you to use them easily they are well architected they are vetted by a lot of uh, solutions architects here at amazon so for example api gateway plus lambda is a commonly used pattern so you can quickly pick up pick that up from solution constructs and so on and so forth and you can configure them as you wish so to summarize now because you're writing these constructs and you can share this construct which is just code you can share this construct with a lot of people in your organization or share it with the community outside it makes it uh, your uh, infrastructure quite reusable and now you're defining your infrastructure as real code so now you can use the same logic that you were using uh, for creating applications you can create use the same testing standards that you had you can have the same code review workflows that you are using for your application for infrastructure and that's what cdk allows you to do and that's why i said cdk lets you do infrastructure is code and it's not just as code so let's quickly talk about cdk 8s or cdk for kubernetes itself cdk for kubernetes unlike cdk is meant for any kubernetes deployment anywhere that you have hosted it's not just not for aws it can be anywhere so it's very environment agnostic you can use any kubernetes apis or custom resources that you want to use with it it's open source so anyone can actually add, uh, go ahead and contribute to that uh, uh, open source package on github as well uh, it's still in alpha stage so it's just been announced this year uh, but you can still play around, you can still have a look at the roadmap and definitely contribute back to CDKs. So quickly, what is CDKs? Same like CDK, you have the CDKs application, but instead of uh, creating stacks, you will define charts and each charts will have different constructs. Now here, the constructs go from AWS resources to actually having resources like your pods or your services or your deployments that you want to define in a Kubernetes environment, right? You use the CDK and CLI to actually create this application, initialize it, and then you can synthesize into a Kubernetes manifest file, which then you can give to your kubectl and kubectl will, will deploy these resources in your Kubernetes environment. That's as simple as that. So for an example, here is an example where I've defined, let's say a label, right? Like hello KX. And I can now use that label anywhere in my application. I don't have to worry about a lot of things like a human error or someone did a typo. I don't have to worry. Now I can use the same logic or principles that I used to have in a programming language. Same with CDK 8S for creating my Kubernetes manifest files. So what are your next steps? Go ahead, check it out on GitHub. Both are available on GitHub. You can also, if you're interested for a workshop, CDK has a workshop as well. So there are step-by-step -step, uh, guidelines on how you can work with uh, CDK. And there's a lot more information on the uh, AWS website on how you can work with CDK or CDK. So you can also reach out to me uh, via Twitter or LinkedIn, and I'll be happy to answer a lot of questions. Go build. Thank you.